Hi, welcome to Tactical OP and Neo's Handguns and Reloading. I'm OP, and there's Neo. Okay guys, uh, in this video, we're going to be setting up the bullet cedar die on the Hornady Lock and Load AP Press. I uh, have the Hornady Custom Grade die set for 10mm or 40 Smith & Wesson, and I am loading 40 going to be a few things we're going to need okay the die of course out of the set a bushing lock ring a lock and load bushing you're going to want your scale so we can measure the powder charge because we're going to go full through the full step of actually making the bullet and a set of calipers you're going to want to know the overall case length measurement uh, that your powder charge specs call for uh, for your gun the gunpowder you're using and also Break out the book so we have our dimensions for measuring Our case mouth too. make sure we're good make sure it's going to chamber when we get done that we've got the uh, the crimp tight enough on the bullet so uh, Okay, first thing we're going to do I'm going to set the camera down. Okay. Going to grab our bullet cedar die. We're going to loosen off this knurled lock ring here and we're going to back out on the bullet cedar. Back it out a pretty good ways. Okay. Now we're going to grab one of our lock rings run that up on the bullet cedar die pretty close to the top get it way up here out of, out of our way okay so for the die right this second I'm gonna grab a lock and load bushing go to the fifth stage of the press okay I've taken my uh, deep priming sizer die out of here because uh, in the I don't know if you've watched uh, my other videos I deep prime and size before I clean my casings that way I end up cleaning the primer pocket as well uh, after I have deep primed everything I take that die out of there uh, no no sense in sizing it again I leave my uh, expander die I've got my powder charger at this station here when the casing comes around on the shell plate to this station is where I lean over look down into the casing and make sure that it's got powder in it and then the fifth stage right here is where the bullet gets seated so stick your lock and load bushing in the fifth station lock it in grab your bullet cedar die go up here and drop it into that bushing and get it started a little ways okay since the housing of this bushing actually crimps the case mouth um, you want to be sure and we want to set our bullet depth before we crank on this if not then we'll never get the bullet in it'll squeeze the mouth of the casing tight before the bullet gets all the way seated so uh, that can cause you a problem if you go uh, that direction with it you need to set this adjustment first before we lock down the depth on this there are ways to cheat uh, if you want to grab box ammo you want to mic it uh, 1.125 is what my powder uh, calls for my overall case length to be so I mean if you look up your specs on your powder and 1.25 or 1.125 what it calls for whatever and you have box ammo or laying around you can mic it okay and then you can use that uh that bullet out of that boxed ammo if you come up right at the uh spec of what your gunpowder is calling for overall case length you can use that bullet to help you get your die close faster but we're going to say we don't have that and we're going to set it up without okay the way i like to do that is 
uh, to get us in the ballpark quicker. I'll grab a casing. It's ready to go. Okay, it's already been deprimed, sized, cleaned. I've got a primer in it. It's been expanded. I have not charged it yet uh, just because I don't want to make a mess in this step because I am not going to put a bullet in it right this second. But I'm going to set it in the station that is next in line for our cedar die. Okay, we'll go ahead and run the shell plate up, handle all the way down. I'm going to take the body of the die and I'm going to slowly screw it down until I barely feel it touch that casing. As you can tell, it's ways down. I'm gonna run my luckering even higher. Okay, should be getting very close though. Right there, okay, it just made contact. I'm gonna back off of that just slightly. Temporarily, I'm gonna turn the lock ring where it can hold the die body stationary while I set the bullet seater. Okay, so now I'm gonna let shell plate back down, let it go ahead and kick that casing out. And I'm going to set the camera as close as I can to where you can see what's happening. I can get all of it there. I want to turn on my scale because I want to have to measure my powder as we come around and we're going to build a bullet. Get my calibers handy where I can use those. Okay. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go over to my scale. I've already got a primer in the casing. I'm going to weigh it. I'm going to hit tear weight to zero it out. I'm going to load the casing into the shell plate. I'll cycle it around to my expander die. Now get a powder charge. Now the station where I inspect to make sure it has powder in it, and it does, but I want to pull it out anyway, and I want to see if our measurement is exact. My number's 4.7 is what I'm looking for. 4.9, so it's a little hot. 4.8 is good. I can go with 4.8. But it looks like it may be a hot 4.8. It's 4.9. Okay, 4.9 is a little hotter than I want to go. So I'm going to dump that off in there. I'm going to put this in the station that will go be next at the powder measure. I'm going to run my metering screw in just slightly to lower my charge and I am going to charge that casing again bring it around go back to the scale it's kind of deja vu of uh, my video on setting up the powder charger 4.9 again 4.8 be a hot 4.8 and that's a little more than I want. 4.7 is the charge I'm looking for. 4.7 throws me about 950 foot per second and that's where I want to be. I'm trying to keep my pressures down and such. So I'm going to tighten this a little bit more and we'll try it again. Teetering on four seven four eight four seven. Give me two readings the same, and I'll go with it. 
So four, eight. One more time. Just slightly in on the screw. Four seven, four six. Okay. I can go with a four six. Especially just for video sake here. Four seven, four six. So, so I got a light four seven or a heavy four six. That's good. That's good. This is target load, so alright. Now we're ready to start setting it setting up our bullet cedar die. Okay, I'm gonna set the camera back down. So we can see what's going on here. And I want to tilt it down a little bit so we can see the shell plate better. Okay, I'm going to grab a bullet. I'm going to set it right in the case mouth as straight as I possibly can. I'm going to run the shell plate up. And I'm going to go to our bullet cedar adjustment. Run that down until it touches the bullet. Once again, you'll feel right when it hits. Okay, now I am going to, and this is where you got to be careful because you have powder in your casing, so grab your casing as you bring that shell plate back down. I am going to bring the shell plate down and grab a hold of the casing because we're going to go right back into the same station we were just a second ago. But before we cycle the press again, we're going to run this die in. Generally, I like to go about a turn with it just to get an idea where we're at. Give us a starting point. Okay, let's cycle it. Now the bullets started going here. Okay, my spec I'm running tight group powder, overall case length spec for tight group 1.125. Grab my calipers. And we're way too long. So we need to run that. Let's see if you can see the measurement there. Run the uh, cedar deeper into our die. Let me move the camera better now. Okay. I'm putting the same bullet back in the slot that is next in line for the bullet cedar die I'm going to give it another full turn in on the cedar adjustment and cycle the press again okay Let's see what our case length is now zero it out okay Still got a ways to go. 1.2, we need to be 1.125. Okay, same process again. Setting in the station next in line for the, the bullet cedar die. Full turn. Cycle it. Looks like it's getting closer now. Okay, let's see what we got. Okay, yeah, 1.1465, okay, we're getting close, we're going to start making smaller adjustments now, same bullet back in station next in line for the bullet cedar die, let's go about, I don't know, almost half a turn. And let's see what we got. Yeah, 1.125. Okay. Uh, max length 
1.135 okay uh, anything shorter than a 1.125 uh, would I would not be happy with I'm trying to keep my pressures as low as possible and maintain uh, my 950 foot per second uh, just to conserve really I mean I, it could be in slightly further and it not be a safety hazard but I'm trying to conserve casings so uh, I figure if I can keep the pressures down then uh, maybe that'll help okay so we have got this set really close to where we need it okay so now we've got to set the crimp part of it so I'm going to put this bullet back in the station next in line okay and I am going to loosen our lock ring possibly strange how you can tighten with your fingers but you can't break them loose okay now we don't need much so I'm going to back off the lock ring slightly I am going to turn the body of the die while holding the bullet seater Then I'm going to slightly, just lightly snug the lock ring. Okay, and here is where I will we'll go ahead and use this one, I guess. Alright, now we're going to cycle our bullet. And you can feel more resistance now. We're setting the crimp on it. I want to go ahead and I want to check my overall length again. Okay, so I'm starting to drop down because it's ran through the uh, cedar die one too many times. Or 1.19, still okay. I will want to back off this slightly after I played with that adjustment and ran the body down of the die. Okay, in our case mouth diameter. What we're going to start measuring now, look at my book, is uh, 0.423 with bullet inserted. So we're going to see what we got there. We need to set that crimp tighter. And we do just slightly. Just slightly. We're at 0.424. Okay, so we're right there, but just not quite. Loosen the lock ring. And run the body of the die while holding the bullet seater. We'll turn it about. I gave it probably a little less than a quarter turn. Now we're going to put the bullet back in the station again. Try it again. Okay, let's see what we got. Overall length still 1.19 case mouth is let me see, I slipped off the edge of the bullet there. 0.422, so we're good. All right, now that's one bullet. Before I tighten any of this down. I'm going to build another bullet, see if we come up the same way, because this one was run through the cedar uh, die multiple times. Uh, you won't run one through one time, it may not push the bullet in as far as this one's uh, been pushed in, so we want to check that for sure. So I've got to uh, power the scale back up. We're going to... Zero it out with our casing on here. Put our casing in. Run it through the expander. Get our powder charge. 
Okay, and we have powder. We're going to measure it. Point four eight. Point four seven. That's what I want. Set it back in the station that's next in line for the die. For the cedar die. We're going to set a bullet in here as straight as possible. And see what we get. Okay, I'll set the camera down so I can work the calipers here. Calipers are zeroed out. Okay, 1.128 on overall length. Okay, I said we're good. 1.125 to 1.135. So uh, we're right in the middle there. I like that. Okay, now let's check our case mouth. Point four two two. Okay, now we can lock everything down. And we have made the perfect bullet. Isn't it beautiful? Okay. Just hold everything in place. I'm holding the cedar portion of the die, running the lock ring down right into place. Now I'm taking the bushing lock ring, tightening it, grab a little Allen wrench, and I want to tighten the pinch bolt. And then we'll do it all again. Okay. Get a tear weight on our casing. It's zeroed out. Okay. Stick it in the press. Slide around to the expander. Get our powder charge. I'm going to take it over here to the scale, see what we got. As you can see, I'm still getting inconsistent readings on my powder measure. 0.48. We're going to adjust that real quick. I know you guys are probably getting tired of seeing me play with my uh powder meter here but uh i don't want to push a bullet into that casing until i've got the charge i want .49 if i get two in a row i'll go with that let's see One more time, I'll screw the metering adjustment in just a little bit more. If I get a 4.6, I'll go with it and put a bullet in it for video's sake. Let's see. Four seven. If I get another four seven. Four eight. And it's holding 4.7, so I'm going to go with that. I'm going to set it back in the station I pulled it out of. Uh, grab a bullet. Set it in the casing. Run it up to our cedar die. Okay, I'm going to set the camera down so we can I can work the calipers. Let me 
tilt it where you can see that 1.128 Okay, that's perfect. Now we're going to measure case mile. And I keep slipping off of the case mile. I try to get it right on the edge at the top of the case. Uh, I think that gives us the most accurate measurement. Uh, 0.423. 0.424 is our spec another perfect bullet and that's what the, all there is to it uh, takes a little bit of time uh, a little bit a little bit more finicky than your other dies but uh, not a whole lot to it uh, definitely easier than the nine millimeter taper crimp die which I will be doing a video on that one too uh, that one that one you can pull your hair out with sometimes, but this one's not too bad to get set up And that's all there is to it. If you have any questions leave it in the comment section and once again. Thanks for watching Now why can't you ever do that when I'm loading bullets?